Start recording. OK, there we go. So data structures. We're already familiar with one from Python and 161, the lists. It's a nice linear data structure. But there's even arguably simpler ones, such as a stack, or another one called a queue. And we already talked about lists. So a stack is just like, you ever go to a buffet with a stack of plates? You know, and whenever like the bus person comes out to put more plates on the stack of plates, well, where do you put the, the stuff on the stack? Well, you put it at the top of the stack. And then when you come along and you want to take a plate, well, you take it off the top of the stack. And then there's a queue. Have you literally ever lined up for anything ever? You ever gone to McDonald's, Tim Hortons, Starbucks, whatever, and get in a line? That's a queue. The first person there is the first one served. And then lists. And there's a lot of different types of lists. Like, you know, we have ordered lists, index lists. Index lists are basically what you were used to in Python and unordered lists. But a list is a nice, very general linear data structure. Okay, the lab room and the other people. Okay, guys, if you stick around after class, we can make your group chat. That's a good idea. I think that's a great idea, Jackson. Um, okay, cool. Okay, now I said it was a linear data structure. This is just a, here, I can close that. A fancy way to say, like, the data is like stored in a line. Each piece of data has one successor and one predecessor. Unless, of course, it's the last or first element. Like, the last element has no successor. There's nothing after the last element. And the first element has nothing before it. But in general, you know, if I say go to the next element, there's an obvious thing. If you're at the number 40 and I say go to the next element, well, what is it? 51. What's the previous one? 29. There's no decision to be made. But there's also nonlinear data structures. A big important one is a tree, which we'll also get to in this class, where information is stored in a hierarchy. And there's a lot of examples of trees out there. Um, but you can think of your file system, like, oh, you've got your C drive. And then under there, you have your documents and settings and program files and your music. And then under program files, you have Adobe, Microsoft, Office, whatever. It's just this huge file system. It's like a tree. And we call it a tree because computer scientists forget that trees go the other way, but it's a tree. We call this the root and these the leaves. I know it's upside down, but it is what it is. And then graphs are a generalization of a tree, um, which can represent how things relate to one another. And a graph is a very general idea. Here's a graph representing airports and flights between them. Um, obviously, you could probably go from Toronto to New York City, but this is just an example. Now, we call these nonlinear data structures, though, because if I say, you're, okay, you're at program files, go, go to the next element. You're left going, well, uh, is, I mean, is that my music? May, or do you mean Adobe or Microsoft? Like, I don't know. I mean, what is, it, what is the next here? Or even at a graph, if I'm at Moncton or Halifax and say, go to the next element, you're left, well, that's... That's not really a valid question. That's not a question you can ask in this scenario. It doesn't really make any sense. There's no natural linear ordering here. The data, it's not like in a line. So yeah, like here, what comes after Toronto? I mean, that's a ridiculous question. It's like asking what comes after car? I mean, that doesn't even apply in this situation. It's not, an, it's not a relevant, valid question. Okay, so abstract data types. And I'm going to give you a warning. Um, there's going to be a lot of words that sometimes are used interchangeably. Abstract data types, collections, data structures. They all technically have different meanings, but it's not uncommon for people to just use these words interchangeably. And then given the context, people will know what you mean. Will this part of the lecture be recorded? Yes, it is actually actively being recorded. Um, <clears throat> I'll post it immediately following the lecture. And yes, it, I started it back up at the linear data structures bit. Um, okay, abstract data types. So there are collections of data, sometimes called abstract data types. And we use the word abstract because it's the idea that we care about. It's the idea that we care about. It's the tree, the stack, the queue. That's the idea. And it's, it's the high-level idea. But the high-level idea tells us nothing about how that's implemented. You all use lists in Python, presumably if you took 161 with me. You all use lists. That's like the abstract idea, a list. 
but it doesn't tell you a single thing about how it's implemented. Like, how does that really work under the hood? You know, we got the car, but we never opened the hood to look at what the hell's going on inside. So abstract data types are this high level idea, but we will also talk about specific implementations of these abstract data types, the data structures themselves. And we will, this is what this, like the first half of this course is all about. So for example, we are going to talk about stacks. I think stacks is the first one. Yeah, stacks is the first one we'll talk about. This is the idea. You want to add information to a stack? Great, it goes to the top of the stack. You want to take information out of a stack? It comes off the top of the stack. And you've used stacks a lot on your computers, whether you like it or not. Have you ever used the undo button on your computer? Whenever, like you're in Microsoft Word, you hit undo. Have you ever used undo? Of course you have. So every change you make in that Word document gets added to this stack. Then whenever you actually want to undo something, well, you just undo that change by removing that change that got added to the stack. It's just like when you hit backwards on your, on your browser, right? Oh, I want to go back. Okay, then take the top thing off the stack and go to the previous thing. It's that idea though. Like there's no physical stack anywhere. It's just this idea. But how does it work? Well, we can build those a number of different ways. We can do it with arrays or linked structures as well. I heard a bunch of boops. Typing is a stack. Yes. <laughs> control Z. Yes. So that is that what control effectively. Yes, there is a stack keeping track of that information. So everything up until now is I have not mentioned the programming language we're using. And that's because I know I sound like I'm beating a dead horse. I, if, if at any point it feels like I'm teaching you a programming language, I'm teaching you wrong. I am teaching you abstract data types and algorithms <clears throat> and algorithm analysis, how to sort, how to search. That's what I'm teaching you. I'm not teaching you Java. Last semester, I really wasn't teaching you Python. I taught you Python syntax. I taught you how to do an if statement, a function, a loop and whatnot in Python. But that's not Python. What makes Python Python is a whole bunch of other stuff. I taught you the basic low level syntax that is more or less the same for many, many, many programming languages. There's some small little syntactical differences, but they're very similar. In fact, you might remember from 161, if we go down to, I think it was this one, Python, C++, Java. Look, def, oh, it's, it's a function. Oh, okay, it's, it's a function. Okay, it's, it's a function. Yeah, it's a function. We have a for loop, for loop, for loop. We have an if statement, if statement, if statement. If the condition's true, we return true. If we ever get to the end, we return false. The algorithm is the same. The syntax is slightly different, but the algorithm's the same. Here's an example of code in a language called Haskell, that is a linear search that looks nothing like the other ones. But Java, C++, and Python, they're the same. At the level that we are really caring about, some small syntactical differences, but effectively they're the same for us. I am not teaching you Java. If I'm teaching you Java, I'm doing something wrong. I'm teaching you basic Java syntax so you can do the stuff for this course, but I'm not teaching you Java. And I'm going to be the first person to tell you here. Let's start the course by me saying, I am not a Java programmer. I'm great at Java with the low level stuff. But as soon as we start getting into very specifics about Java or anything, I'm not going to know. Maybe I can give you an educated guess, but I might even be wrong. But that tells you that sometimes, like even if I don't have the right answer for something, it kind of gives you a sense of what's important here and what's not important. That's not to say that the question you have isn't an interesting question. It's just, if I don't know it, it's probably because it's not necessarily that important right now for this course, but you know, we can go figure that out later. So I'm not a Java programmer. I'm not a Python programmer. I, I know the syntax, I can write code in those languages, but the stuff that makes someone a Java programmer is all this stuff. 
Now, people will say, oh, last year the course was C++. We learned C++. Well, yeah, but I would not feel comfortable saying that after last year you were C++ programmers. You could program with C++ syntax, but to know C++, like you're talking about knowing the standard library, how to do all this stuff that we don't even come near in this course. And that's because we are learning the underlying important features here. What's the algorithm? I don't care about the code. I care about the algorithm. Sure, you make the code work to show that it works, but the algorithm is what's important. Your ability to tell me what's in the standard library, I really don't care because I have Google too. Okay, bunch of questions. Will we have to learn Haskell? No. Haskell does look pretty freaking crazy. Uh, can you use Java syntax in Colab? I do not believe so. Yeah, I don't think we can. I don't think. Uh, modern survival skills. Thank you. Uh, what type of programmer am I? I'm really not a programmer. I'm a computer scientist that writes code. <laughs> the, the programming language I do use will depend on the circumstances. The big three that I'll jump between are Python, Java, and C++. Almost exclusively Python if I can because it's really quick and easy. But if I have to write any like serious application to do something, it'll be probably Java. And there's pros and cons to each language. Uh, okay, yeah, so there's my rant about the programming language. So, Java, I thought it's supposed to be C++. Nope, not anymore because it's not 1989. Uh, to be fair, those three languages are most, exactly, Kalen is absolutely right. And more on this, if you ever go to a job interview later and people are like, well, do you know C Sharp? And maybe you've never programmed in C Sharp before, but that's a stupid question because if you are a computer scientist worth their weight and whatever, despite never programming in C Sharp, you should be well enough aware that you know C Sharp. You can pick up the syntax in an afternoon, if that, and any of the extra things that you need to know to be competent in C-sharp, you'd pick up along the way. So if you are good at what you're doing, the, like you should be able to take what you're doing and apply it to a variety of different languages. Now, Haskell, well, I mean, that's a whole other thing, right? Because the syntax is pretty crazy. Someone said it's whack, right? But yeah. All right, need more subs? Yeah, okay, Google will help fake it. Exactly! Just like that tweet, right? <laughs> All right, we're going to be switching programming languages to Java, but I liked Python. Don't worry, you'll realize that they're very similar. Uh, more than that, the main ideas here are the same between the languages. There are some Java-isms, though, we will point out and have to learn along the way. So there will be some. And I will do a hand wave to emphasize those things as we get there. So, warning, programming in Java are not a direct learning objective of this course. We are learning abstraction, data structures, and algorithms. So much so that if you go to the course outline, it says nothing about the programming or the programming language. So how do I go about programming Java? Go here. It's, it's this. Okay. Uh, can I write code now? Yes. This is what we will end with today. What's the difference between Java and JavaScript? The same difference between... Um, okay, first... They are not the same at all. It's an unfortunate naming coincidence. I saw a good joke once. Um, oh, crap, and of course I can't think of the There's a good joke where it's like, oh, Java has as much to do with JavaScript as X has to Y that have like a similar name, but I can't think of it right now, so joke ruined. But to answer your question, they are not the same. That said, the syntax is very, 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 very Dove soap and Dove chocolate. Sure. <laughs> Great. But, I mean, the syntax, though, the same underlying base concepts for Java, Python, C Sharp, C++, JavaScript are going to be very similar. All right. Let's write some code. So here's our Hello World in Python, right? We all love our Hello World in Python. It's easy. Print Hello World. Done. Well, in Java, there's some extra stuff going on. So I am, I've opened up my IntelliJ. Here's what we're gonna do. And a lot of people jump some steps here and think they're being quick and special at it, but they end up ruining everything. Take your time with this. You're here, I already have one here, but I'm gonna create a new project. And I'm gonna call it, up here it'll say like, oh, which SDK do you want? If you've already installed your JDK, SDK means source development kit, JDK means Java development kit, JDK is an SDK. Um, you can select one here. If you've already downloaded it, this should already be autofilled. Just leave this alone. Do not select any of these things. We're making a very basic program. 
So we want a very basic empty project to start from. So we're here, I hit next, create project from template, nope, next, a project named, uh, lecture stuff. And I'm just gonna put it on my desktop because why not, finish. All right, there we go, it's doing everything. It's just setting up my environment. You'll see some uh, progress bars taking place and everything. You should be looking at something like this. The first thing you'll do here is, I mean, this is just an empty IDE, IDE integrated development environment. Interact, integrated. So here we go, but there's nothing here. Where do I write code? Easy, SRC, that's your source. So you go to this folder, you right click, new Java class, and then we're gonna name it. The name you give this class though, have it start with an uppercase letter. Lecture one, created. I hit enter, there. You will recognize class. You will recognize public, kind of, but just so we can end at a reasonable time, I'm just gonna copy this code. I fear my line numbers might come with me. Shoot, they did. Well, fine. Uh, system dot out dot print line hello world and I'm gonna hit run sometimes the first time you hit run it might ask you where you want to run it but I'm just running it and boom hello world I realize I did that really quickly we will go over this next class and we'll talk about what we're seeing here but there hello world done if you did lab on Monday, you've already done this. If you have lab on Thursday, you will at the very least do it then. I would encourage you to go play around though and get familiar with it and you should be good. Okay, we will end there. Uh, do the S out tab. I will, I will next time. What if you don't? What if you don't what? What if you don't what? Do you stream games on Twitch? I probably will pick that up again once things settle down a little bit. Things are still pretty crazy. All right, I'm going to stop the recording. You can stick around for a few moments, though, if you have any. Yeah, capital letter for the name of the class. It doesn't have to be, but it has to be.